the right kind of road for this car and immediately acceleration is just manic with the roof down you can hear the blow of valves and performance is really strong but wait where are we and how have we managed to get the ferrari 296 gts up here well first this mind blowing stretch of tarmac sits in the foothills of the himalayas and stretches from kumar hatti to nahan in himachal pradesh lightly trafficked wide beautifully surfaced it ducks loops and dives in between the coniferous forests and the craggy cliffs and it ranks as one of the ideal places to drive this car our journey starts in chandigarh past suburbs like panchkula and then on to a four laner en route to simla we won't follow the road all the way there however we'll turn right at kumar hatti and that's when we'll get to the good stuff but enough chit chat let's get going first steps getting my luggage in and the surprising bit is that there's quite a bit of room here especially for soft bags soon we are on the road now driving out through the suburbs you encounter a lot of patchy and bad roads and in this car you need to be a bit careful but do that and these roads can be easily traversed by the 296 GTS it just needs a bit of care you need to avoid the really large potholes and then what helps is press down on the manitino and the car goes into its bumpy road setting right there and then the ride actually is pretty good so you aren't going thud 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 and it's actually pretty comfortable Unlike the Ferraris of yesteryear, which were only designed with the European and American roads and conditions in mind, modern Ferraris are made to go pretty much anywhere. Even the lift function for the front suspension works a treat. Now, before we start our journey, the first thing is to top up with some really good fuel. And here we have 100 octane. XP 100 or 100 octane is just what the car needs. And further ahead, what we'll do is we'll balance it out. We'll put in a quarter tank or half tank of fuel, which may not be to the same octane level, but that'll give us a good balance, a high enough octane number, so we can run the car properly. Tanks brimmed with 100 octane and battery pack charged earlier. This is a plug-in hybrid after all. We head in the direction of the highway. But here too, initial going is slow. Fruit vendors, ice cream carts, people getting bottled water clog the left lane. And I must say, while this is a flip top, it does a great impression of a regular hard top. Now this hard top is pretty silent. There's no extra noises coming from it, even over some rough sections. And it does feel like a normal roof of the car. There however is a bit of hot air creeping through here when I put my hand between the joint of the windscreen and the roof. That said, the cooling is strong and the aircon is more than sufficient for the small cabin. Up ahead, some stretches where I can use more right foot. Now, on an open road like this, the Ferrari really comes into its own. And what's great about this car is you can just allow it to flow along with the road. On this plug-in hybrid, there are various drive modes you can select. Hybrid mode is pretty good if you want to drive in a relaxed manner. And then you see a stretch, you see a set of good corners and you can quickly change to performance. Wake up the engine and really have a blast. 
For reference, the GTS can do 0 to 200 km an hour in just 7.6 seconds. I drop the top down briefly, but then it starts to rain. Of course, to use a convertible in India, you have to find the right conditions. Further ahead, we go past the difficult to cross toll plaza, only to run into some more rain. It rains so hard, we decide to divert to our night halt, the eclectic, minimalist, but still very luxurious Amaya in Kasoli. Situated on a hillside, the cluster of structures is made using cured lime instead of cement. And the connection with nature is so strong, the resort grows all its own vegetables. It proves to be the perfect antidote to all the insane performance rolled out by the Ferrari. The next day, we make the trek up nice and early. A cool breeze is blowing, the sky is a shade of blue, you only see in enhanced pictures and the road leading out of Kumarhati looks like absolute bliss. I immediately lower the roof, which takes around 14 seconds, and get ready to enjoy what is a spectacular road. Now with the roof down, not only is it a bruiser with hypercar performance and go-kart like agility, it can also be a cruiser if you want. When you really wind it up and dial it up to 9, this engine and powertrain launches the car from one corner to the next it just hurls it forward and you have to get on the brakes stand on it bleed speed stabilize it and then get into the next corner but this is a car you have to work at you have to play with you have to understand and only then can you really get that last bit of performance And what I'm also enjoying here is the open top experience. Yes, this car gives you that wind in the hair feeling. But with the kind of performance on tap here, I think this car might blow away whatever hair I have left. It's now beginning to get really hot with the sun beaming down, so I put the roof back up. But let's break it down and see just why the 296 GTS drives the way it does. What clearly helps it feel so agile is that all the mass is concentrated in the center. And then there's the manner in which it makes power. The GTS, however, doesn't feel quite as sharp or as fluid as the GTB on turn-in. And there's a bit of push from the front wheels before it balances itself out. And then the folding hardtop means it weighs 70 kilos more than the GTB. And convertibles are never as stiff as hardtops. roof apart, there isn't too much that's different on the inside when compared to the GTB. Now this is where the GTS is really different from the GTB. These two buttons here, this is to lower the roof and this one here is to drop the rear windscreen so you can hear the engine better. The best bit however, is a key holder here and isn't that absolutely gorgeous? I've never seen a key that's half as good. Wow. It also helps that Ferrari's Manitino system is so clear-cut. Now the Manitino here on the steering wheel controls a whole load of functions. The first one down here is wet. The next is sport, what you normally drive in. Then there's race, which is the most hardcore performance version on this. And after that is CT off and ESC off. So when you hold the ESC off, it goes completely off and then, well, you're on your own. On the left, on the steering wheel, are the powertrain options. ED is for electric only driving mode. After that is a hybrid. There's an H for that hybrid. It starts in electric, need more performance. The engine starts up. 
Then there's performance with this checkered flag here. And finally, the stopwatch. That's qualifying where you get the full 830 horsepower. So the steering wheel, similar to the GTB, is nice and compact, thin rimmed with LED markers here, leather, carbon fiber, and indicators on the steering wheel, no stocks here. These arms of the steering wheel, they change according to the modes you're in. This here is your engine start button. You can press it and start up the engine. I don't like the confusing capacitive touch buttons and the same goes for the blower controls. The tachometer, however, gets pride of place on the instrument cluster. And that just looks great. Parked up overlooking the valley, the 296 GTS also looks stunning, both roof up and roof down. This clearly is one of the best looking modern Ferraris. And thing is, you can't easily distinguish the GTS from the GTB. It's tough. So we managed it finally. We've driven this crazy car on this fantastic road here in the Himalayan foothills. It's been a task, it's been a tough job coming all the way from Chandigarh through rain, some bad patches, some traffic, but getting onto this road has been absolutely worth it. There's nothing like a great road to elevate a driving experience, especially for a really, really good car. And this hybrid system, this Formula One derived hybrid system, gives this car the response and punch you can't imagine. And then what has made this even better is that you can flip open the top of the GTS and make it an even more immersive experience. What a day! So yes, Ferraris can be used and be driven out to some really amazing roads. And the 296 GTS certainly is right up there when it comes to drop tops. It does cost around 80 lakh more than the GTB, but with its hypercar pace, its ability to tackle everyday roads, and that mechanized roof that adds plenty of charm, it's practically every supercar you want rolled into one.